we can see that loading a web page can take some time, ranging from a few milliseconds to a few seconds. Hence, to make the UX a little better, we can show some kind of a loading indicator to the user when the web page is being loaded. So let's show this loading indicator on top of our web view. To create overlapping widgets in Flutter, we can make use of the stack widget. The stack widget is similar to the row or column widget in the sense that it takes multiple child widgets instead of a single one. By using the shortcut menu, we can easily refactor this existing child parameter to children, which would then automatically take care of the brackets and wrapping of widgets for you. Let's add our loading indicator widget. The widget we'll use is called the circular progress indicator widget. Now when we hot reload the app, we see that the circular progress indicator appears on top of the web view in the top left corner of the space occupied by the stack widget. This circular progress indicator widget takes up the primary color by default which in our case is blue. On diving into the stack widget's definition, we see that its docs mention that the children of the stack are aligned by their top left corners by default and that's what we just observed. Next, let's see the order in which the stack widget displays the elements. So let's add a red container widget and a slightly smaller yellow container widget to our stack. We observe that the widget that's declared later in the list of children widgets is the one that appears above the widgets that are declared before it. If we move the circular progress indicator to the bottom of the children list, it appears at the top of all the children widgets. Let's delete the two container widgets. To center the circular progress indicator inside the stack widget, one way is to wrap it in a center widget. But note that this would only center the circular progress indicator in the stack widget. And if we add more children to the stack widget, they would still appear on the top left of the stack. To fix this problem, the stack widget has an alignment parameter. As you can see, the alignment is set to top start, that is top left by default. We can overwrite this in our stack widget and use the center alignment value instead. Now, even after removing the center widget and hot reloading, we observe that the circular progress indicator widget remains in the center of the stack. All further widgets added to the stack will also show up in the center of the stack. You can change the alignment value to something else as well as required by your use case. Next, we don't want the circular progress indicator widget to always be visible. We want to show it when this page is shown but want to hide it as soon as the web page behind it has finished loading. For a use case like this, the web view widget has a on page finished parameter which does the job of notifying the web view when the web page has finished loading. To control the visibility of the circular progress indicator, let's create a private variable called isLoadingWebPage and initialize it with the value true since the web page would be loading when we enter this screen. That is, when the build method of the view bookmark page widget is invoked. And in layman terms, we would change the value of this variable to false when we know that the page has finished loading using the onPageFinished parameter. Now, since our widget needs to update itself on the basis of some change in state, we can easily convert our stateless widget into a stateful widget, which would then give us access to the setState method. 
On diving into the definition of the on page finished parameter, we observe that it has a return type of a callback, which simply means a function. We see that this parameter requires a function of return type void that takes in a string argument. This argument is the URL of the page being loaded, which can be used to perform different things on the basis of the URL of the web page currently being loaded in the web view. But for our use case, we wouldn't really use this argument. For our use case, all we need to do is perform the change in value of the is loading web page variable inside the set state method. Now that our widget would be informed about the change in state, Let's make use of this change in state. If our web page is loading, we would want to show the circular progress indicator. Once it is done loading, which means that the value of is loading web page is false, we need to remove the circular progress indicator, which simply means replacing with an empty container widget. For this, we use the ternary operator from Dart which simply means that use the first argument if the statement on the left is true, else use the second argument. Let's hot reload and see this in action. If you ever come across such an error on hot reloading, simply hot reload again. This is quite common when you have switched from a stateless widget to a stateful widget. Now, we observed that our circular progress indicator appeared for almost a second and it disappeared after the page was loaded. Now our web view seems to be working quite well. Since this stack widget has grown in size, let's move it to a widget of its own and call it the view web page widget. Don't forget to move the is loading web page private variable to this new widget as well. Now, since all our changes to state are within the view web page widget itself, we are no longer required to have our view bookmark page class as a stateful widget. Therefore, let's convert it back to a stateless widget instead. To confirm if our code still works, let's change the hard coded URL from Google's homepage to Flutter's homepage instead and hot reload. Since the Flutter homepage is a little heavier than the Google homepage, it takes slightly longer to load it. And that's where our circular progress indicator is really useful. It would be even better to move this view web page widget to its own file inside the widgets package, just like we have done with our other widgets. Once done, make sure that you fix the imports in both the files. The next problem that requires fixing is changing this hard-coded Flutter homepage URL to the actual link of the list item that the user clicks on the bookmark list. Hence, when we are navigating from the bookmark list to the view bookmark page, we need to send this bookmark object as an argument so that we can extract the link of the bookmark from it later. Using the shortcut menu, we can auto-generate the constructor with the bookmark argument inside the view bookmark page class. Now, since the view web page widget only needs the link of the bookmark and nothing else, Let's pass the link of the bookmark to it instead of the entire bookmark object. This link is of the type string as automatically inferred by the auto-generated constructor. When done, finally replace the hard-coded URL with the URL received in the constructor. Since this is not in the state class, we can access it from the stateful widget class by using the widget keyword. On hot reloading, we observe that our web views 
Now load the URL corresponding to the list item clicked. Our web views implementation is now complete. However, to further improve the UX, we can change the title in the app bar of the view bookmark page to show the title of the bookmark instead of the hard coded string view bookmark. Since we already have the bookmark object in the view bookmark page, we can simply replace this hard coded string with the title of the bookmark instead. Now, when we hot reload, we observe that tapping the Flutter bookmark shows the title Flutter and tapping the Google bookmark shows the title Google.